Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at this exercise that include six different attributes or six different scenarios that we're going to be working with. Attribute one, two, three, all the way down till six. So we're going to have the attribute, whatever that attribute is for internal control. We're going to be looking at the estimated population except, exception rate. You, this is set by the auditor. And this is basically what the auditor expect the uh, the exception rate to be the deviation rate to be for example for attribute one they expect to find actually no no deviation whatsoever that's their that's their expectation ter ter is what ter is the tolerable exception uh, exception rate or the toler tolerable deviation rate they expect none but they can tolerate up to six then this is also said by the auditor. This, this is said by the auditor. ARO, what is ARO? The acceptable risk of over-reliance. What is that? It's what, the risk that the auditor is willing to take of accepting the control as effective when the true population exception rate is higher than the uh, tolerable exception rate. So what risk am I taking to accept the control? I'm taking a 5% risk. In this situation, I'm taking 5% risk that the true population exception rate is greater than the to tolerable exception rate. So I'm taking that risk, only a 5% risk. So whatever I come up with, I'm 95% confident, but there is a 5% chance I could be wrong. Okay, this is the initial sample size. This is all, this is said by the auditor. The, the, auditor, the, the auditor decide on this based on the riskiness of the business or the riskiness of the EA attribute, the riskiness of the internal control in question. Initial sample size, this is we calculate. Then the sample size that we use, that's that's we decide on this. The number of exception is what we come up with after the audit. For example, we find one error for this attribute and cure. And this is important, the computed upper exception deviation or ex exception rate. So what is this? This is the upper limit. This is what we can tolerate. This is the upper limit of the probable population exception rate. So it's the highest exception rate we are willing to accept giving this ARO. Okay, we're going to look at a number and we'll explain it. But those are what we have on the screen. So the first thing for the attribute one, so we have everything set. They're asking us to compute Cure. They're asking us to compute the upper deviation rate. The upper deviation rate. How do we compute the upper deviation rate? We have to go to the, there's a table. You have to know how to use the table. So if you go to the table here, make sure you have a 5% table and you have a 10% table for the risk of over-reliance, which is the ARO. So make sure you're using the right table. For the first, for the first scenario, what we need to look at, we need to take a look at the sample size and we need to take a look at the number of exceptions found. So here the number of exceptions found is one and the sample size is 50. So we're going to go down here. The, sem the exception is one, the sample size is 50. So cure is 9.2. Cure is 9.2. Cure is 9.2. Again, what does 9.2 means? It means this is the upper limit of the probable population exception rate because we are sampling. Now, what we did is this. When we when we sampled in in attribute one, we found one errors of 50. Notice one out of 50. So the sample one was 50. We found one. Basically, what we do at this point, we'll take one divided by 50, and that's 2%. Now, are we sure this is 2%? We're not sure because we... What, what did we do? We sampled. So we say because there is a sampling risk, the error could be up to 9.2%. The error could be up to 9.2%. That's what we're saying. We found 2%, but it could be up to 9.2%. Now, how does this upper deviation rate helps us? Upper deviation rate, we're going to compare the upper deviation rate to the tolerable exception rate. If the upper deviation rate is higher than the tolerable deviation rate, we say that the control, we're not going to rely on the control because the control is no good. We would reject. Now we can do other, we, we can um, adjust our uh, testing, but based on this information, we will not, we're not going to accept the control. Okay, let's take a look at attribute number two. Attribute number two, we have EPER 0.5, tolerable ex ex exception rate is 5%. 
the here what we did is we increase is we increase the ARO we increase the ARO the acceptable risk of over reliance now we are taking more of a chance okay now we are taking more of a chance that we could be wrong but we're taking more of a chance okay we need to compute the initial sample size we need to compute the initial sample size so let's take a look at how we compute the initial sample size the first thing we do is we are dealing with five percent ten percent now not five percent acceptable risk of over reliance so we have to go to the tables that says 10 percent and this is the table that says 10 percent let me just make it make sure we can see the whole table just give me one moment please so we're dealing now with this table 10 percent risk of over reliance just give me one moment here okay so this is the table this is the table so 10 percent. let me go back to see the numbers the numbers five percent and 0.5 percent so what we do is we go down to this table expectation estimated population exception deviation or exception or deviation rate is 0.5 we're willing to accept up to five percent uh, five percent tolerable exception so the answer is 77 therefore the population is here 77 and this was 9.2 percent okay notice in this in attribute 2 in attribute 2 the tolerable exception rate is 5 percent this is how much we can tolerate okay and the upper the upper deviation rate the upper deviation rate is 2.9 now what, what do we say well um what we've actually for one thing we found zero exception we found zero exception so that's really good but although we found zero exception we could be wrong and the rate could be 2.9 this is what we mean by 2.9 notice in this attribute two once again in attribute two we found zero exception we selected 80 samples and all of them they were good although they were all of them good although they were all of them good we would still compute an upper exception deviation rate because because we sampled okay because we sampled we could still be 2.9 percent wrong okay we could be wrong all right so now what we do is we accept this we accept this attribute 29 percent wrong giving what given a 10 percent so we're given we're taking a higher chance 10 percent is taken higher chance than five percent but this is what this means okay so this we say this control is good because the uh, tolerable exception rate five percent is higher than the upper deviation rate of 2.9 attribute 3 we are giving the um, estimated uh, exception population rate we are not giving the tolerable exception rate we are giving the risk 10 percent the sample size is 55 the initial and the sample size 55 the number of exception is one and the cure is 6.9 now they want us to to compute the tolerable deviation rate now usually that's set usually that's set by the auditor but if you don't have it you can find it from the table you can find it from the table if you go to the sampling table if you go to the sampling table and what you do is you look at the table first you are dealing with a 10 percent over reliance so make sure you are working with the right table 10 percent and what you need you need to find out let me go back and see the numbers here give me one second so 10 percent uh, um one percent okay so we're dealing with one percent so it's so we're dealing with one percent estimated population deviation rate okay one percent and we don't know the tolerable rate but we know the sample is 55 so we go across until we find 55 and that's the number right here therefore the the tolerable exception rate for this example is seven percent so the tolerable exception rate is seven percent do we accept this control well we have to compare the seven percent to the upper uh, deviation rate the computed upper deviation rate and tolerable is higher a little bit higher maybe that maybe here the auditor will need to make a judgment if they're going to accept or not but we're going to accept mathematically ter is higher than cure will accept the control we're going to rely on the control attribute four we're looking to find the number of exceptions we're looking to find the number of exceptions now if we were giving the uh, if we were giving but we're not giving this if we were given the exception rate basically the exception rate is the number of exception divided by the sample side but we're not given the exception rate 
So what do we have to do to find the number of exceptions? We have to go to the table that shows us where we can find the actual number of exceptions. We don't know this number, but we need to compute it. This is the number that the auditor actually do the work for. Now we have a sample size of 80. We have a sample size of 80 and we have cure of 5.8. So what we do is we go to down sample size of 80 and we're going to go across until we find 5.8 and this is the 5.8. Therefore, we have one error. Therefore, we have one error. The number of exception is one. So basically, we expect to the estimated population exception rate is 1%. We can tolerate up to six. The risk of over-reliance, we're taking 5% risk, which is which is uh, low, which is we're, you know, we're not taking a lot of risk. The sample size is 78. We chose to go with 80. The number of exception is one. And the upper deviation rate or the upper exception rate is 5.8. We accept because six is higher than 5.8. Okay. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, what else do we have? Attribute five, attribute five, we don't expect to, we don't expect to uh, have any errors. We can tolerate up to 4%. They're asking us for the ARO. Um, we have the initial sample size of 74. The sample size that we selected is 80. We found actually zero deviation. Although we found zero deviation, what's gonna happen, the upper deviation rate is computed to be 3.7 at whatever ARO is, okay? So, uh, so we need to find what is ARO, okay? So what, what can we do if we go to, um, what do we have? Um, we have the sample size for this example, we have the sample size of 80. So if we go sample size, we go to sample, so where's the sample size? Sample size 80, so we have for this example, the sample size is 80. We have the number of exception is zero. The number of exception is zero. And what else do we have? Uh, um, oh, we have also the uh, the upper deviation rate, which is uh, 3.7. Oh, it's right here, 3.7. So the answer is we are using a 5% risk of over-reliance. So we're using a 5% risk of over-reliance. That's a, so we're given we're taking a five percent risk. Okay, we're taking a five percent risk. Okay. <laughs> and number six, obviously, you would need to find the sample size. Hopefully, you know how to do this. And notice number six, uh, the control is no good because the upper deviation rate is higher than the tolerable exception rate. The tolerable exception rate. Okay. So hopefully, by looking at this example, you you know you, you can put all you, you learn how to use the tables and you can put all this information together. And remember, those three are used in the planning stage, and this is the basically we started the work, we select the sample and compute all the other information, which is here's the actual results. So notice it's a, this table is broken down into two sections in a sense. One is the planned audit. We plan this, we plan this, we plan this. Then we select the sample size. This is the selection, those two columns, and basically we evaluate the results here. Here's the results, and this is where we evaluate the results. Okay? If you have any questions, by all means, email me or see me in class. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.